Citizen Series for first block final examination. And in physiology today, our topic is type of blood cells, their morphology, synthesis, and function. In first prof final examination, you can get question like write a short note on platelet, their normal count and function, or WBC, their classification, morphology, and function. So let's start. First, let us look at this peripheral blood smear. We will first try to know the morphology of all the cells in this peripheral blood smear and then we will revise it subsequently. As you can see, RBC, also known as erythrocyte, have a size of lymphocyte nucleus. These are biconcave disc shape and have central one third pallor. Now, coming to leukocytes. Leukocytes are classified as granulocytes and agranulocytes. In granulocytes, you have neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. In agranulocytes, you have lymphocytes and monocytes. In neutrophils, you have 3 to 5 lobes, small blue granules, these are most abundant cell. In eosinophils, you have a spectacle shaped by lo lobe nucleus and brick red granules. In basophils, you have free granules obscuring the nucleus, these are least abundant cell. In agranulocytes, you have monocytes which have no granule and the nucleus is kidney shaped or reniform. These are the largest blood cell and subsequently leads to tissue macrophages. There are lymphocytes which are small cell with round nucleus and no granulo granules, hence known as agranulocytes. Now coming to erythrocytes. Erythrocytes has a size of 7 to 8 micrometer that is size of a lymphocyte nucleus. They have biconcave disc shape. Average volume of a erythrocyte is 90 to 95 micrometer cube. They have central one-third pallor. Lifespan is about 120 days. As you can see in the picture, there is biconcave shape and hemoglobin-rich cytoplasm in an erythrocyte. Now, coming to hematopoiesis. Hematopoiesis starts in the human fetus as early as 3 weeks. So, from 3 weeks to 3 months, the site of hematopoiesis is the oxac. From 3 to 5 months, hematopoiesis occurs in liver and spleen. From 5 to 9 months, hematopoiesis occurs in red bone marrow of long bones. From birth to 20 years, hematopoiesis occurs in flat bones. After 20 years, red bone marrow of flat bones, like iliac crust and sternum. Hence, this is all about hematopoiesis. So now, coming to formation of the multiple different blood cells from the original to report in hematopoietic stem cell in the bone marrow. This picture is directly taken from Guyton. So, the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell do mitosis and form other pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell. Other than this, this leads to two types of cell, colony forming unit spleen and lymphocyte stem cell. The lymphocyte stem cell will lead to the formation of T lymphocyte and B lymphocyte. The colony forming unit spleen will lead to the formation of three types of cell. Colony forming unit blast, colony forming unit granulocyte and monocyte, colony forming unit megakaryocyte. Colony forming unit blast will lead to the formation of colony forming unit erythrocyte that will subsequently lead to the formation of erythrocyte. Colony forming unit granulocyte and monocyte will lead to the formation of granulocyte that are neutrophil, eosinophil, and basophil and also lead to the formation of color of monocyte. Monocyte will subsequently lead to the formation of macrophages. Colony forming unit megakaryocyte will lead to the formation of megakaryocyte and hence subsequently lead to the formation of platelet. Now coming to erythropoiesis. Erythropoiesis refers to the formation of red blood cell that's erythrocyte. So the first cell here is the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell. The pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell will lead to the formation of burst forming unit erythrocyte. The burst forming unit erythrocyte is the earliest committed progenitor. From burst forming unit erythrocyte, we will get colony forming unit erythrocyte. The colony forming unit erythrocyte has the highest erythropoietin receptor. From the colony forming unit erythrocyte, we will get proerythroblast. The hemoglobin synthesis begins here. From colony forming unit erythrocyte, we will get proerythroblast. Hemoglobin synthesis begins here. From proerythroblast, we will get basophil erythroblast. From basophil erythroblast, we get polychromatophil erythroblast. Hemoglobin first appears in polychromatophilic erythroblast. From polyerythrophilic erythroblast, we will get orthochromatic erythroblast. 
orthochromatic erythroblast have the hemoglobin synthesis complete then we will get reticulocyte reticulocytes are immature rbc containing nuclear remnant then we will get erythrocyte erythrocytes are mature rbc now coming to functions of erythrocyte there are various function of erythrocyte the first most important one is oxygen transport RBC utilizes hemoglobin, a protein, to bind to oxygen molecule in the lung. The oxygen-rich hemoglobin is then transported through the bloodstream to the body tissues and organ. Then, the second most important function of RBC is carbon dioxide removal. As the tissue metabolizes oxygen, they produce carbon dioxide as a waste product. RBC carry this carbon dioxide waste back to the lungs, where it is exhaled. Then, the third function is maintaining blood viscosity. RBC contribute to the viscosity of blood, which is important for proper blood flow and circulation. RBC also have various type of antigens. RBC carry blood type antigens on their surface, which are crucial for determining blood type compatibility during transfusions. RBC also help in immune response. While their primary function is oxygen transport, RBC can also play a role in the immune system by binding to and removing pathogens and other substances. Now, coming to the morphology of leukocyte. As we have al already seen, neutrophils consist of 3 to 5 lobes, small blue granules, and these are the most abundant cells, 40 to 70 percent. Lymphocytes are a small red cell, round nucleus, and no granules. Monocytes have no granules. These have kidney-shaped reniform nucleus. These are largest blood cell. Eosinophils have a spectacle shape. These are bilobed nucleus and have brick red granules. Basophils have few granules, obscuring the nucleus. These are least abundant cell. Now coming to leukopoiesis. Leukopoiesis refers to the formation of white blood cell. This all start with hematopoietic stem cell. Hematopoietic stem cell, also known as hemocytoblast, will lead the formation of myeloid stem cell and lymphoid stem cell. The myeloid stem cell will lead to the formation of myeloblast and monoblast. Myeloblast will lead to the formation of promyelocyte. Promyelocyte will differentiate and lead to the formation of eosinophilic myelocyte, basophilic myelocyte, and neutrophilic myelocyte. The eosinophilic myelocyte will lead to eosinophilic band cells that will subsequently lead to eosinophils. The basophilic myelocyte will lead to basophilic band cells that will lead to basophils. The neutrophilic myelocyte will lead to neutrophilic band cells that will subsequently lead to neutrophils. Now coming to monoblast. The monoblast will lead to the formation of promonocyte that will ultimately lead to the formation of monocyte and then lead to the formation of tissue macrophages. Now coming to lymphoid stem cell. Lymphoid stem cell will give rise to B lymphocyte precursors and T lymphocyte precursor. From the B lymphocyte precursors, we will get B lymphocytes, which will ultimately lead to the formation of plasma cells. From the T lymphocyte precursors, we get T lymphocytes, which will ultimately lead to the formation of affected T cells. Now, coming to the functions of WBC. Neutrophils, these are 50 to 70 percent in the blood. Their function is additions, chemotaxis, phagocytosis, release of antibacterial compound. Eosinophil, that is 1 to 4 percent in the blood. These interact with T lymphocyte in allergy, halmen, larvicidal activity. Basophils, these are less than 0.5 percent. They mediate inflammation, initiate tissue repair after injury. Now, coming to T lymphocyte and B lymphocyte, these are 20 to 40 percent in blood. T lymphocyte act in cellular immunity as an helper, memory and cytotoxic T cells. B lymphocyte help in humoral immunity. They form plasma cells that will secrete immunoglobulins. Now coming to monocytes, these are 2 to 8 percent in the blood. These have role in immunoregulation such as antigen presentation, phagocytosis and chemotaxis. Now coming to megakaryocytes, platelets. Average platelet count in humans is 1,50,000 to 4 lakh cells per mm cube. Lifespan of platelet is 10 days. Now, coming to the synthesis of megakaryocyte, they, the synthesis starts from colony forming unit spleen that will form colony forming unit megakaryocyte that will lead to megakaryoblast 
which will form pro megakaryocyte that will lead to megakaryocyte and then platelet will be formed now coming to the functions of platelet platelets are mainly involved in thrombosis and formation of platelet plug platelets promote coagulation this will help in conversion of prothrombin to thrombin platelets help in the formation of bioactive lipids such as eo cosinoids and prostaglandins to reinforce platelet plug formation platelet granules contains alpha granules which will have platelet factor 4 which acts as a procoagulant fibronectin which help in binding to thrombocyte thrombospondin that will help in the stabilization of platelet plug platelet derived growth factor that will promote fibrosis and wound healing the dense bodies contain adenine nucleotide and serotonin Lysosomes contain enzyme like acid hydrolases. Microperoxisomes contain catalases. These all about blood cell synthesis, their morphology and functions. You can comment your doubts in the comment section. We will solve them. And thank you. Have a nice day.